The effect of mobile phone radiation on human health is the subject of recent interest and study, as a result of the enormous increase in mobile phone usage throughout the world. As of November 2011, there were more than 6 billion subscriptions worldwide. Mobile phones use electromagnetic radiation in the microwave range. Other digital wireless systems, such as data communication networks, produce similar radiation. In 2011, International Agency for Research on Cancer classified mobile phone radiation as Group 2B, possibly carcinogenic. That means that there could be some risk of carcinogenicity, so additional research into the long-term, heavy use of mobile phones needs to be conducted. The WHO added that to date, no adverse health effects have been established as being caused by mobile phone use. Some national radiation advisory authorities have recommended measures to minimize exposure to their citizens as a precautionary approach. Effects Many scientific studies have investigated possible health symptoms of mobile phone radiation. These studies are occasionally reviewed by some scientific committees to assess overall risks. A 2007 assessment published by the European Commission Scientific Committee on Emerging and Newly Identified Health Risks concludes that the three lines of evidence, vis animal, in vitro, and epidemiological studies, indicate that exposure to RF fields is unlikely to lead to an increase in cancer in humans. Radiation absorption, part of the radio waves emitted by a mobile telephone handset are absorbed by the body. The radio waves emitted by a GSM handset are typically below a watt. The maximum power output from a mobile phone is regulated by the mobile phone standard and by the regulatory agencies in each country. In most systems the cell phone and the base station check reception quality and signal strength and the power level is increased or decreased automatically, within a certain span, to accommodate different situations, such as inside or outside of buildings and vehicles. The rate at which energy is absorbed by the human body is measured by the specific absorption rate, and its maximum levels for modern handsets have been set by governmental regulating agencies in many countries. In the USA, the Federal Communications Commission has set a SAR limit of 1.6 watts per kilogram, averaged over a volume of 1 gram of tissue, for the head. In Europe, the limit is 2 watts per kilogram, averaged over a volume of 10 grams of tissue. SAR values are heavily dependent on the size of the averaging volume. Without information about the averaging volume used, comparisons between different measurements cannot be made. Thus, the European 10 gram ratings should be compared among themselves, and the American 1 gram ratings should only be compared among themselves. SAR data for specific mobile phones, along with other useful information, can be found directly on manufacturers' websites as well as on third-party websites. It is worth noting that thermal radiation is not comparable to ionizing radiation in that it only increases the temperature in normal matter, it does not break molecular bonds or release electrons from their atoms. Thermal effects, one well understood effect of microwave radiation is dielectric heating, in which any dielectric material is heated by rotations of polar molecules induced by the electromagnetic field. In the case of a person using a cell phone, most of the heating effect will occur at the surface of the head, causing its temperature to increase by a fraction of a degree. In this case, the level of temperature increases in order of magnitude less than that obtained during the exposure of the head to direct sunlight. The brain's blood circulation is capable of disposing of excess heat by increasing local blood flow. However, the cornea of the eye does not have this temperature regulation mechanism and exposure of 2 a euro 3 hours duration has been reported to produce cataracts in rabbits eyes at SAR values from 100 to 140 watts per kilogram, which produced lenticular temperatures of 41 a degree Celsius. There were no cataracts detected in the eyes of monkeys exposed under similar conditions. Premature cataracts have not been linked with cell phone use possibly because of the lower power output of mobile phones. Non-thermal effects, the communications protocols used by mobile phones often result in low-frequency pulsing of the carrier signal. Whether these modulations have biological significance has been subject to debate. 
Some researchers have argued that so-called non-thermal effects could be reinterpreted as a normal cellular response to an increase in temperature. The German biophysicist Roland Glaser, for example, has argued that there are several thermoreceptor molecules in cells, and that they activate a cascade of second and third messenger systems, gene expression mechanisms and production of heat shock proteins in order to defend the cell against metabolic cell stress caused by heat. The increases in temperature that cause these changes are too small to be detected by studies such as reflex, which base their whole argument on the apparent stability of thermal equilibrium in their cell cultures. Other researchers believe the stress proteins are unrelated to thermal effects, since they occur for both extremely low frequencies and radio frequencies, which have very different energy levels. Another preliminary study published in 2011 by the Journal of the American Medical Association conducted using fluorodeoxyglucose injections in positron emission tomography concluded that exposure to radio frequency signal waves within parts of the brain closest to the cell phone antenna resulted in increased levels of glucose metabolism, but the clinical significance of this finding is unknown. Blood or Eurobrain Barrier Effects Swedish researchers from Lund University have studied the effects of microwave radiation on the rat brain. They found a leakage of albumin into the brain via a permeated blood or eurobrain barrier. This confirms earlier work on the blood or eurobrain barrier by Alan Frey, Oscar and Hawkins, and Albert and Kearns. Other groups have not confirmed these findings in vitro cell studies or whole animal studies. However Frey alleges that an editor determined that a researcher who claimed that his attempts to replicate Frey's research had not validated Frey's results had incorrectly interpreted his own results, and that his research had confirmed Frey's results. Professor Lschinski of Finland's Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority found that, at the maximum legal limit for mobile radiation, one protein in particular, HSP27, was affected. HSP27 played a critical role in the integrity of the blood-brain barrier. Cancer In 2006 a large Danish group study about the connection between mobile phone use and cancer incidents was published. It followed over 420,000 Danish citizens for 20 years and showed no increased risk of cancer. A 2011 follow-up confirmed these findings. The following studies of long-time exposure have been published. The 13 nation interphone project a euro the largest study of its kind ever undertaken a euro was published in 2011 and did not find a solid link between mobile phones and brain tumors. The International Journal of Epidemiology published a combined data analysis from a multinational population based case control study of glioma and meningioma, the most common types of brain tumor. The authors reported the following conclusion. Overall, no increase in risk of glioma or meningioma was observed with use of mobile phones. There were suggestions of an increased risk of glioma at the highest exposure levels, but biases and error prevent a causal interpretation. The possible effects of long-term heavy use of mobile phones require further investigation. In the press release accompanying the release of the paper, Dr. Christopher Wilde, director of the International Agency for Research on Cancer said, an increased risk of brain cancer is not established from the data from Interphone. However, observations at the highest level of cumulative call time and the changing patterns of mobile phone use since the period studied by Interphone, particularly in young people, mean that further investigation of mobile phone use and brain cancer risk is merited. A number of independent health and government authorities have commented on this important study including the Australian Centre for Radio Frequency Bioeffects Research which said in a statement that, Until now there have been concerns that mobile phones were causing increases in brain tumours. Interphone is both large and rigorous enough to address this claim, and it has not provided any convincing scientific evidence of an association between mobile phone use and the development of glioma or meningioma. While the study demonstrates some weak evidence of an association with the highest tenth of cumulative call time, the authors conclude that biases and errors limit the strength of any conclusions in this group. It now seems clear that if there was an effect of mobile phone use on brain tumor risks in adults, this is likely to be too small to be detectable by even a large multinational study of the size of Interphone. The Australian Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency which said in a statement that 
on the basis of current understanding of the relationship between brain cancer and use of mobile phones, including the recently published data from the Interphone study, Apansa concludes that currently available data do not warrant any general recommendation to limit use of mobile phones in the adult population. Continues to inform those concerned about potential health effects that they may limit their exposure by reducing call time, by making calls where reception is good, by using hands-free devices or speaker options, or by texting. And recommends that, due to the lack of any data relating to children and long-term use of mobile phones, Parents encourage their children to limit their exposure by reducing call time, by making calls where reception is good, by using hands-free devices or speaker options, or by texting. The Cancer Council Australia said in a statement that it cautiously welcomed the results of the largest international study to date into mobile phone use, which has found no evidence that normal use of mobile phones, for a period up to 12 years, can cause brain cancer. Chief Executive Officer Professor Ian Ulva, said findings from the Interphone study, conducted across 13 countries including Australia, were consistent with other research that had failed to find a link between mobile phones and cancer. This supports previous research showing mobile phones don't a Euro unregistered trademark T damage cell DNA, meaning they can't a Euro unregistered trademark T cause the type of genetic mutations that develop into cancer, a Euro Professor Ulva said. However, it has been suggested that electromagnetic fields associated with mobile phones may play a role in speeding up the development of an existing cancer. The Interphone study found no evidence to support this theory. A Danish study that took place over 10 years found no evidence to support a link. However, this study has been criticized for collecting data from subscriptions and not necessarily from actual users. It is known that some subscribers do not use the phones themselves but provide them for family members to use. That this happens is supported by the observation that only 61% of a small sample of the subscribers reported use of mobile phones when responding to a questionnaire. A Swedish study that draws the conclusion that the data do not support the hypothesis that mobile phone use is related to an increased risk of glioma or meningioma. A British study that draws the conclusion that the study suggests that there is no substantial risk of acoustic neuroma in the first decade after starting mobile phone use. However, an increase in risk after longer term use or after a longer lag period could not be ruled out. A German study that states in conclusion, no overall increased risk of glioma or meningioma was observed among these cellular phone users. However, for long term cellular phone users, Results need to be confirmed before firm conclusions can be drawn. A joint study conducted in Northern Europe that draws the conclusion that although our results overall do not indicate an increased risk of glioma in relation to mobile phone use, the possible risk in the most heavily exposed part of the brain with long-term use needs to be explored further before firm conclusions can be drawn. Other studies on cancer and mobile phones are a Swedish scientific team at the Karolinska Institute conducted an epidemiological study that suggested that regular use of a mobile phone over a decade or more was associated with an increased risk of acoustic neuroma, a type of benign brain tumor. The increase was not noted in those who had used phones for fewer than 10 years. The Interphone Study Group from Japan published the results of a study of brain tumor risk and mobile phone use. They used a new approach determining the SA or inside a tumor by calculating the radio frequency field absorption in the exact tumor location. Cases examined included glioma, meningioma, and pituitary adenoma. They reported that the overall odds ratio was not increased and that there was no significant trend towards an increasing OR in relation to exposure, as measured by SAR. In 2007, Dr. Lennart Hardell, from a Rebro University in Sweden, reviewed published epidemiological papers and found that, cell phone users had an increased risk of malignant gliomas. Link between cell phone use and a higher rate of acoustic neuromas. Tumors are more likely to occur on the side of the head that the cell handset is used. One hour of cell phone use per day significantly increases tumor risk after 10 years or more. 
in a February 2008 update on the status of the Interphone study IARC stated that the long-term findings a euro a euro could either be causal or artifactual, related to differential recall between cases and controls a euro unregistered trademark, a self-published and non-peer-reviewed meta-study by Dr. Vni Kurena, an Australian neurosurgeon, presented what it termed increasing body of evidence for a link between mobile phone usage and certain brain tumors, and that it is anticipated that this danger has far broader public health ramifications than asbestos and smoking. This was criticized as a euro a euro an unbalanced analysis of the literature, which is also selective in support of the author a euro unregistered trademark s claims a euro unregistered trademark, a publication titled Public Health Implications of Wireless Technology cites that Lennart Hardell found age as a significant factor. The report repeated the finding that the use of cell phones before age 20 increased the risk of brain tumors by 5.2, compared to 1.4 for all ages. A review by Hardell et al. concluded that current mobile phones are not safe for long-term exposure. In a time trend study in Europe, conducted by the Institute of Cancer Epidemiology in Copenhagen, no significant increase in brain tumors among cell phone users was found between the years of 1998 and 2003. The lack of a trend change in incidence from 1998 to 2003 suggests that the induction period relating mobile phone use to brain tumors exceeds 5 a euro 10 years, the increased risk in this population is too small to be observed, the increased risk is restricted to subgroups of brain tumors or mobile phone users, or there is no increased risk. On May 31, 2011 the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified radiofrequency electromagnetic fields as possibly carcinogenic to humans. The IARC assessed and evaluated available literature and studies about the carcinogenicity of radiofrequency electromagnetic fields, and found the evidence to be limited for carcinogenicity of RFEMF based on positive associations between glioma and acoustic neuroma and exposure. The conclusion of the IARC was mainly based on the Interphone study, which found an increased risk for glioma in the highest category of heavy users, although no increased risk was found at lower exposure and other studies could not back up the findings. The evidence for other types of cancer was found to be inadequate. Some members of the working group opposed the conclusions and considered the current evidence in humans still as a euro or inadequate a euro, citing inconsistencies between the assessed studies. Researchers at the National Cancer Institute found that while cell phone use increased substantially over the period 1992 to 2008, the U.S. trends in glioma incidence did not mirror that increase. Cognitive effects a 2009 study examined the effects of exposure to radiofrequency radiation emitted by standard GSM cell phones on the cognitive functions of humans. The study confirmed longer response times to a spatial working memory task when exposed to or afar from a standard GSM cellular phone placed next to the head of male subjects, and showed that longer duration of exposure to or afar may increase the effects on performance. Right-handed subjects exposed to RF are on the left side of their head on average had significantly longer response times when compared to exposure to the right side and sham exposure. Electromagnetic hypersensitivity Some users of mobile handsets have reported feeling several unspecific symptoms during and after its use. Ranging from burning and tingling sensations in the skin of the head and extremities, fatigue, sleep disturbances, dizziness, loss of mental attention, reaction times and memory retentiveness, headaches, malaise, tachycardia, to disturbances of the digestive system. Reports have noted that all of these symptoms can also be attributed to stress and that current research cannot separate the symptoms from nocebo effects. Genotoxic effects, a meta-analysis of 63 in vitro and in vivo studies from the years 1990 Euro 2005 concluded that RF radiation was genotoxic only in some conditions and that the studies reporting positive effects evidenced publication bias. A meta-study of 101 publications on genotoxicity of RF electromagnetic fields showed that 49 reported a genotoxic effect and 42 not. The authors found ample evidence that RFEMF can alter the genetic material of exposed cells in vivo and in vitro and in more than one way. In 1995, in the journal Bioelectromagnetics, 
Henry Lee and Narendra P. Singh reported damaged DNA after two hours of microwave radiation at levels deemed safe according to U.S. government standards. In December 2004, a pan-European study named reflex exposure using sensitive in vitro methods, involving 12 collaborating laboratories in several countries showed some compelling evidence of DNA damage of cells in in vitro cultures, when exposed between 0.3 to 2 watts per kilogram, whole sample average. There were indications, but not rigorous evidence of other cell changes, including damage to chromosomes, alterations in the activity of certain genes and a boosted rate of cell division. Research published in 2004 by a team at the University of Athens had a reduction in reproductive capacity in fruit flies exposed to 6 minutes of 900 MHz pulsed radiation for five days. Subsequent research, again conducted on fruit flies, was published in 2007, with the same exposure pattern but conducted at both 900 MHz and 1800 MHz, and had similar changes in reproductive capacity with no significant difference between the two frequencies. Following additional tests published in a third article, the authors stated they thought their research suggested the changes were a euro or a euro due to degeneration of large numbers of egg chambers after DNA fragmentation of their constituent cells a euro euro. Australian research conducted in 2009 by subjecting in vitro samples of human spermatozoa to radio frequency radiation at 1.8 GHz and specific absorption rates of 0.4 to 27.5 watts per kilogram showed a correlation between increasing SAR and decreased motility and vitality in sperm, increased oxidative stress and 8-oxo-2-deoxyguanosine markers stimulating DNA base adduct formation and increased DNA fragmentation. Sleep and EEG effects, sleep, EEG and waking or CBF have been studied in relation to RF exposure for a decade now, and the majority of papers published to date have found some form of effect. While a Finnish study failed to find any effect on sleep or other cognitive function from pulsed RF exposure, most other papers have found significant effects on sleep. Two of these papers found the effect was only present when the exposure was pulsed, and one early paper found that sleep quality improved. While some papers were inconclusive or inconsistent, a number of studies have now demonstrated reversible EEG and RCBF alterations from exposure to pulsed RF exposure. German research from 2006 found that statistically significant EEG changes could be consistently found but only in a relatively low proportion of study participants. Brain Glucose Consumption, a team led by Dr. Nora Voko, head of the National Institute on Drug Abuse, used advanced imaging technology to monitor glucose consumed in the brain. They found that even weak cell phone radiation alters brain activity near cell phone antenna. Environmental Working Group now recommends cell phone users limit their exposure to cell phone radiation by for example looking for cell phone models that emit low radiation. Behavioral Effects A study on mice offspring suggested that cell phone use during pregnancy may cause behavioral problems that resemble the effects of ADHD. Sperm Count and Sperm Quality a number of studies have shown relationships between mobile telephone use and reduced sperm count and sperm quality. Peer-reviewed studies have shown relationships using statistical questionnaire techniques, controlled experiments on living humans, and controlled experiments on sperm outside the body. The Environmental Working Group has a webpage entitled Cell Phone Radiation Damages Sperm, Studies Show published August 2013. The EWG page reviews and tabulates studies showing relationships between mobile phone use and low sperm count and sperm quality. Health hazards of base stations Another area of concern is the radiation emitted by the fixed infrastructure used in mobile telephony, such as base stations and their antennas, which provide the link to and from mobile phones. This is because, in contrast to mobile handsets, it is emitted continuously and is more powerful at close quarters. On the other hand, field intensities drop rapidly with distance away from the base of transmitters because of the attenuation of power with the square of distance. One popular design of mobile phone antenna is the sector antenna, whose coverage is 120 degrees horizontally and about a 5 degrees from the vertical. 
because base stations operate at less than 100 watts, the radiation at ground level is much weaker than a cell phone due to the power relationship appropriate for that design of antenna. Base station emissions must comply with safety guidelines. Some countries however have no health regulations governing the placement of base stations. Several surveys have found a variety of self-reported symptoms for people who live close to base stations. However, there are significant challenges in conducting studies of populations near base stations, especially in assessment of individual exposure. Self-report studies can also be vulnerable to the nocebo effect. Two double-blind placebo-controlled trials conducted at the University of Essex and another in Switzerland concluded that mobile phone masts were unlikely to be causing these short-term effects in a group of volunteers who complained of such symptoms. The Essex study found that subjects were unable to tell whether they were being exposed to electromagnetic fields or not, and that sensitive subjects reported lower well-being independently of exposure. The principal investigator concluded it is clear that sensitive individuals are suffering real symptoms and often have a poor quality of life. It is now important to determine what other factors could be causing these symptoms, so appropriate research studies and treatment strategies can be developed. Experts consulted by France considered it was mandatory that main antenna access not to be directly in front of a living place at a distance shorter than 100 meters. This recommendation was modified in 2003 to say that antennas located within a 100-meter radius of primary schools or child care facilities should be better integrated into the cityscape and was not included in a 2005 expert report. The agents for a section as desire copyright curator copyright sanitaire environmentale currently says that there is no demonstrated short-term effect of electromagnetic fields on health, but that there are open questions for long-term effects and that it's easy to reduce exposure via technological improvements. Occupational health hazards, telecommunication workers who spend time at a short distance from the active equipment, for the purposes of testing, maintenance, installation, etc., may be at risk of much greater exposure than the general population. Many times base stations are not turned off during maintenance, but the power being sent through to the antennas is cut off, so that the workers do not have to work near live antennas. A variety of studies over the past 50 years have been done on workers exposed to high RF radiation levels. Studies including radar laboratory workers, military radar workers, electrical workers, and amateur radio operators. Most of these studies found no increase in cancer rates over the general population or a control group. Many positive results could have been attributed to other work environment conditions, and many negative results also occurred. Safety standards and licensing In order to protect the population living around base stations and users of mobile handsets, governments and regulatory bodies adopt safety standards, which translate to limits on exposure levels below a certain value. There are many proposed national and international standards, but that of the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection is the most respected one, and has been adopted so far by more than 80 countries. For radio stations, ICMIA proposes two safety levels, one for occupational exposure, another one for the general population. Currently there are efforts underway to harmonize the different standards in existence. Radio base licensing procedures have been established in the majority of urban spaces regulated either at municipal county, provincial state or national level. Mobile telephone service providers are, in many regions, required to obtain construction licenses, provide certification of antenna emission levels and assure compliance to ICNIP standards and or to other environmental legislation. Many governmental bodies also require that competing telecommunication companies try to achieve sharing of towers so as to decrease environmental and cosmetic impact. This issue is an influential factor of rejection of installation of new antennas and towers in communities. The safety standards in the U.S. are set by the Federal Communications Commission. The FCC has based its standards primarily on those standards established by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers specifically Subcommittee 4 of the International Committee on Electromagnetic Safety. Switzerland has set safety limits lower than the ICNIRP limits for certain sensitive areas. 
On September 1, 2012, India set electromagnetic frequency exposure limit for all mobile phone base stations to one tenth of the existing ICNIP exposure level. Telecom enforcement resource and monitoring cells will audit the self certification provided by the mobile network operators. Lawsuits In the USA, a small number of personal injury lawsuits have been filed by individuals against cell phone manufacturers, such as Motorola, NEC, Siemens and Nokia, on the basis of allegations of causation of brain cancer and death. In U.S. federal court, expert testimony relating to science must be first evaluated by a judge, in a Daubert hearing, to be relevant and valid before it is admissible as evidence. In one case against Motorola, the plaintiffs alleged that the use of wireless handheld telephones could cause brain cancer, and that the use of Motorola phones caused one plaintiff a Euro unregistered trademark S cancer. The judge ruled that no sufficiently reliable and relevant scientific evidence in support of either general or specific causation was proffered by the plaintiffs. Accepted a motion to exclude the testimony of the plaintiffs are Euro unregistered trademark experts and denied a motion to exclude the testimony of the defendant's experts. French High Court ruling against Telecom Company In February 2009 the telecom company Bowieg's Telecom was ordered to take down a mobile phone mask due to uncertainty about its effect on health. Residents in the commune Charbonnier Res in the Rene department had sued the company claiming adverse health effects from the radiation emitted by the 19-meter tall antenna. The milestone ruling by the Versailles Court of Appeal reversed the burden of proof which is usual in such cases by emphasizing the extreme divergence between different countries in assessing safe limits for such radiation. The court stated that, considering that, while the reality of the risk remains hypothetical, it becomes clear from reading the contributions and scientific publications produced in debate and the divergent legislative positions taken in various countries, that uncertainty over the harmlessness of exposure to the waves emitted by relay antennas persists and can be considered serious and reasonable. Italian High Court ruling in favor of causal link with brain cancer In October 2012 Italian High Court granted an Italian businessman, Innocent Marcolini a pension for occupational disease, as they found a causal link to mobile phones and cordless phones, that the businessman had used for six hours a day during 12 years. As it takes time to develop cancer, the court disregarded short-term studies. The court also disregarded studies that were even partially funded by the mobile phone industry such as the Interphone. Indian Citizens Against Telecom Company, a case was also filed against the mobile towers in residential areas, schools and hospitals in 2012. In March 2013, Based on the WHO notification dated May 31, 2011 wherein the mobile tower radiations have been classified as possibly carcinogenic and the research conducted by the scientists of IIT Kharagpur, India a writ has been filed by advocate Vikas Nagwan for the suspected death of one late. Hemant Sharma for removal of the mobile towers from residential areas. Precaution, precautionary principle, in 2000. The World Health Organization recommended that the precautionary principle could be voluntarily adopted in this case. It follows the recommendations of the European Community for Environmental Risks. According to the WHO, the precautionary principle is a risk management policy applied in circumstances with a high degree of scientific uncertainty, reflecting the need to take action for a potentially serious risk without awaiting the results of scientific research. Other less stringent recommended approaches are prudent avoidance principle and as low as reasonably practicable. Although all of these are problematic in application, due to the widespread use and economic importance of wireless telecommunication systems in modern civilization, there is an increased popularity of such measures in the general public, though also evidence that such approaches may increase concern. They involve recommendations such as the minimization of cell phone usage, the limitation of use by at-risk population, the adoption of cell phones and microcells with as low as reasonably practicable levels of radiation, the wider use of hands-free and earphone technologies such as Bluetooth headsets, the adoption of maximal standards of exposure, RF field intensity and distance of base stations antennas from human habitations, and so forth. Precautionary Measures and Health Advisories In May 2011, 
the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer announced it was classifying electromagnetic fields from mobile phones and other sources as possibly carcinogenic to humans, and advised the public to adopt safety measures to reduce exposure, like use of hands-free devices or texting. Some national radiation advisory authorities, including those of Austria, France, Germany, and Sweden, have recommended measures to minimize exposure to their citizens. Examples of the recommendations are, use hands-free to decrease the radiation to the head. Keep the mobile phone away from the body. Do not use telephone in a car without an external antenna. The use of hands-free was not recommended by the British Consumers Association in a statement in November 2000 as they believed that exposure was increased. However, measurements for the UK Department of Trade and Industry and others for the French La Euro unregistered trademark agents for their section as Desire Copyright Curator Copyright Sanitaire Environnementale showed substantial reductions. In 2005 Professor Lowry Shalley and others said clipping a ferrite bead onto hands-free kit stops the radio waves traveling up the wire and into the head. Several nations have advised moderate use of mobile phones for children. See also, wireless electronic devices and health, background radiation, bioelectromagnetism, bioinitiative report, cosmos cohort study, electromagnetic hypersensitivity, electromagnetic radiation and health microwave news, mobile phones and driving safety, non-ionizing radiation, possible health effects of body scanners, radiation biology, references. External links, summary and full text of possible effects of electromagnetic fields on human health, the 2007 scientific assessment of the European Commission SNE. WHO International EMF Programme, Independent Expert Group on Mobile Phones, UK. FDA Cell Phone Facts, FCC Radio Frequency Safety, Medline Plus, by U.S. National Library of Medicine and National Institutes of Health, GSM Association, Health, Public Health and Electromagnetic Fields, Overview of European Commission Activities.